Hi, this is Scott from AHA. Deciding what to build next is one of the most challenging aspects of being a product manager. There's rarely a shortage of ideas or opinions about what you could build. But how do you know which new features will deliver the most customer and business value? Of course, there are many factors considered, such as how many customers actually want the functionality and how important it is to them. You need to also consider how well a feature aligns with your overall product strategy and how much work it will take to build. And all of this can make it difficult to assess product value in a consistent way. So today, I'm going to show you how to use the product value scorecard in AHA to objectively estimate, update, and track the value of what you're building at different points in your product development lifecycle. Let's start by taking a look at the scorecard so you can see how it works. There are five core metrics, and they are population, how many customers will this impact, need, how important is this for those who require it, strategy, how closely connected is this to the company or product strategy, effort, how much work will it take to build, and confidence, what is the level of confidence that we have in each score. By default, the rating scale for population, need, strategy, and effort is 0 to 7, and the scale for confidence is 0 to 100%. And as you update the values, the product value equation dynamically calculates the overall score. And of course, you can customize all aspects of the scorecard to match the way your organization works. It is important to understand that the same scorecard carries through ideas and features. This is key to estimating and tracking the value of what is planned as you go along. So now you know how that scorecard works. Let's take a look at it and use it at different points in the product development lifecycle, starting with ideas. Let's begin by closing this out and getting ourselves situated. So this is the ideas overview page. And on the right, you can see that we have a number of new ideas that need to be reviewed. This is a great time to do an initial value estimation and decide which ones are worth pursuing. As this is early in the product development process, we still have a lot to learn, but let's take a look at an idea and see how this works. This idea is to encourage team exercise. And you can see from the tab here that it already has 23 votes. This idea also relates to social capabilities. So let's add in a social tag. Next, let's begin rating each of the metrics in the product value scorecard. Based on the number of votes this idea has already received, let's score population of four. We'll need to do more customer research to understand the need, so let's leave that one for now. This idea aligns nicely with an initiative we have to improve social capabilities in Fredwin, so let's score strategy of seven. This seems like a fairly small feature to implement, so we'll score effort as a two for now, but obviously we'll need to dig deeper into that. And since we need to learn more about this feature, we can score confidence at 50%. Then we update the score, and we can see that we have a five as the initial product value score. Next. Let's go into the list view so we can compare product value scores across ideas. I can see that the idea I just scored ranks high in the list. So I'm going to go ahead and promote this to a feature in our product backlog. Now let's imagine we're a bit further along in the product development lifecycle and are looking at which features to prioritize for an upcoming list. I'm going to navigate to our features board where we can see our upcoming releases as well as the product backlog. Here you can see that we have the same idea we just promoted except that we've done some research and definition about the scope of work. You can see that the product value score carried over. So now let's go ahead and reassess our initial score and update it based on the latest information. We still have the same number of votes, so we keep population of four. After talking with customers, we found that the need is high, so let's give this a six. Strategy alignment remains a seven. We've also worked with engineering to get a high level estimate, and it looks as though it will require a little bit more effort than we originally thought, so let's update effort to a four. Given all that we've learned about this functionality, we are more confident in our estimate, so we put confidence at an 80%. Now we have a product score of 11. And once we've reviewed all of the features in the backlog using the same approach, we can rank the features in the backlog by score and then prioritize the most valuable ones for release, like the one we just scored. So you can see how using the product value scorecard really brings clarity to the planning process. It can be useful to see how your product value score changes between the initial value estimate and the refined value estimate. You can build a list report to show both the ideas and feature scores. And as you can see, I also added a calculation column to compare the difference between the two. The formula used here subtracts the feature score from the idea score and then divides that result by the idea score. The column is then formatted as a percent to quantify the change. You can see that some scores have gone up and some have gone down as our value assessments changed. And this helps to identify valuable opportunities and make informed decisions about what to build. And that's it. Now you can take a consistent approach to estimating product value and move forward with confidence. Try it out in AHA Ideas and AHA Roadmaps today, and let us know if you have any questions. Our team is here for you. Just email us at support at aha.io or click the question mark in your account and get help from an expert, and we'll respond super fast.